observations have consistently revealed discrepancies between the dynamics of cosmic structures and the gravitational influence expected from visible matter alone. From the flat rotation curves of spiral galaxies to the gravitational lensing of galaxy clusters and the statistical properties of the cosmic microwave background, each points toward a significant unseen mass component, commonly termed dark matter. Yet, despite its central role in the standard cosmological model, dark matter remains undetected in any non-gravitational interaction. No direct detection experiment, be it targeting WIMPs, axions, or other candidates, has produced conclusive results. This persistent non-detection raises a critical question. Are we overlooking the nature of a new form of matter, or are these anomalies symptomatic of an incomplete or incorrect theory of gravity itself? The hypothesis of dark matter originated in the early 1900s. In 1933, Fritz Zwicky applied the virial theorem to the coma cluster, and he found that the velocities of galaxies in the cluster were significantly higher than what could be accounted for by the luminous mass alone. The discrepancy suggested the presence of a large amount of unseen mass. Subsequent investigations, most notably by Vera Rubin and Kent Ford in the 1970s, examined the rotation curves of spiral galaxies. A galaxy rotation curve is a graph that plots the rotational speed of stars and gas within a galaxy against their distance from the galactic center. It essentially shows how fast objects are orbiting at different radii within the galaxy. Classical Newtonian dynamics predicts that the rotational velocity of stars decreases as we move further out from the center. However, observational data revealed that remains approximately constant at large radii, suggestive of a massive, extended, and non-luminous mass. This unseen matter provides the additional gravitational force needed to keep the outer regions rotating at those speeds. Gravitational lensing studies further corroborate this. In particular, the bullet cluster, which consists of two colliding clusters of galaxies, provides compelling evidence. Following the collision of two galaxy clusters, scientists observed that the visible matter, mainly hot gas that emits X-rays, was concentrated in the center. However, when they used gravitational lensing technique, where light from distant objects is bent by the gravity of massive objects, to map the total mass, they found that most of the mass was not with the gas, but instead aligned with the galaxies on either side of the collision, which passed through the collision largely unaffected, staying aligned with the galaxies. This is consistent with the properties of dark matter, which is thought to be collisionless, meaning it interacts only through gravity, not through electromagnetic forces. As a result, dark matter did not slow down during the collision and continued moving with the galaxies. Cosmic microwave background anisotropy measurements from WMAP and Planck provide independent cosmological scale evidence. The angular power spectrum describes a distribution of power or fluctuations in the CMB temperature across different angular scales in the sky. In the spectrum, particularly the relative amplitudes of the acoustic peaks, is highly sensitive to the matter energy content of the universe. Fitting the data within the Lambda CDM framework yields a cold, dark matter density of 0.26. Moreover, the large-scale structure of the universe, as mapped by surveys like SDSS and DSI, exhibits a filamentary distribution of galaxies, the cosmic web. Simulations incorporating cold, dark matter reproduce this morphology with remarkable fidelity, whereas baryon-only models fail to generate sufficient clustering within the observed timescales. While the astrophysical evidence for dark matter is extensive, it is fundamentally gravitational in nature. This limitation underscores the importance of direct detection efforts aimed at uncovering potential non-gravitational interactions between dark matter and standard model particles. A primary class of candidates are weakly interacting massive particles. They are expected to interact via the weak nuclear force and could, in principle, be elastically scatter off atomic nuclei. To detect such rare events, experiments such as Xenon 1T, Lux Zeppelin, and Panda X utilize large volumes of ultra pure liquid Xenon as both target and detector. However, no statistically significant excess above background has been observed. 
Another class of candidates includes axions. In a magnetic field, axions are predicted to convert into photons. Again, results thus far have been null. In direct detection strategies, search for the products of dark matter annihilation or decay, including gamma rays, positrons, or neutrinos. Excesses in gamma ray emission near the galactic center observed by Fermi Lott and others have been interpreted by some as possible dark matter signals. However, these interpretations are contentious, as pulsars and other astrophysical sources provide plausible alternatives. The non-observation of dark matter in any of these methods raises fundamental questions about its interaction, mass, or even its very existence as a particle. Some have suggested that dark matter might reside in a hidden sector, interacting only via gravitational or non-standard portals, such as dark photons or scalar mediators. Others have proposed that dark matter may not be particulate at all, but instead a manifestation of modified gravitational dynamics. This persistent elusiveness has led a growing number of physicists to ask, are we searching for the wrong thing or asking the wrong question? The persistent failure to detect dark matter particles has led some theorists to question the foundational assumption underlying the dark matter paradigm that general relativity accurately describes gravity on all scales. An alternative approach is to postulate that gravitational dynamics deviate from Newtonian or Einsteinian predictions in regimes of extremely low acceleration. The most influential of these alternatives is modified Newtonian dynamics, proposed by Mordechai Milgram in the early 1980s. 80s. In MOND, the gravitational force doesn't fall off as quickly at low accelerations as Newton's law predicts. Instead, when the acceleration drops below a critical threshold, the effective gravitational pull transitions to a weaker, but more persistent behavior. This leads to stars in the outer regions of galaxies maintaining roughly constant orbital speeds with increasing distance from the center, which naturally explains the observed flat rotation curves. Moreover, this behavior gives rise to the baryonic Tully-Fisher relation, an empirical law stating that the total mass of normal, baryonic matter in a galaxy scales with the fourth power of its asymptotic rotation velocity, a relationship that Mund predicts without requiring dark matter. Mond, however, lacks a relativistic generalization and thus cannot address cosmological scale phenomena or provide a consistent framework for lensing or the CMB. To address this, Jacob Bekenstein developed tensor vector scalar gravity, a fully relativistic theory extending general relativity by coupling the metric to additional scalar and vector fields. It can reproduce Mond-like behavior in the appropriate limit and account for gravitational lensing without dark matter. Despite these successes, tensor vector scalar gravity and other relativistic Mond extensions face serious challenges. In particular, they fail to reproduce the acoustic peak structure in the CMB power spectrum without invoking a form of dark field energy, ironically reintroducing unseen components. They struggle to account for cluster dynamics, such as in the bullet cluster, where gravitational lensing indicates mass distributions inconsistent with visible matter alone. A more recent and conceptually distinct idea is emergent gravity, introduced by Eric Verlind in 2016. Unlike traditional theories, which treat gravity as a fundamental interaction, akin to electromagnetism or the nuclear forces. Verlinde proposes that gravity is not fundamental at all. Instead, it emerges as a macroscopic effect, similar to temperature or pressure, from the statistical behavior of underlying microscopic components of space-time. Specifically, drawing on insights from string theory and quantum information theory, he argues that gravity results from changes in entanglement entropy, a measure of quantum correlations, among the microscopic building blocks of space. Within this framework, the apparent excess gravitational attraction in galaxies is not due to additional mass, but to entropic forces induced by dark energy and space-time geometry. While emergent gravity is able to reproduce Mond-like behavior in specific scenarios, particularly in explaining the flat rotation curves of galaxies without invoking dark matter, it is still an incomplete theoretical framework. One major limitation is that it does not yet possess a fully developed field theoretic formulation, which is essential for making precise predictions and integrating with the rest of modern physics. 
Moreover, it has not been shown to consistently match cosmological observations such as the detailed structure of the cosmic microwave background or the large-scale distribution of galaxies, both of which are successfully explained by the standard Lambda-CDM model. Thus, while modified gravity theories offer elegant explanations for certain galactic phenomena with fewer parameters than Lambda-CDM, they remain unable to comprehensively match the breadth of observational data without supplementation. Whether this indicates a need for further refinement or a fundamental flaw in the modified gravity approach remains an open and actively researched question. To evaluate the viability of the dark matter hypothesis versus modified gravity, we must consider the scope and predictive power of each framework across multiple astrophysical and cosmological scales. At galactic scales, MOND and its extensions provide remarkably accurate predictions for rotation curves using only the visible baryonic mass. This level of precision contrasts with dark matter halo models, which often require empirical fitting, such as the Navarro-Frank-White profile. The baryonic Tully Fisher relation, which emerges naturally in MOND, still lacks a fundamental derivation within Lambda CDM. However, at cluster and cosmological scales, Lambda CDM holds a decisive advantage. The mass discrepancy in galaxy clusters, particularly in systems like the Bullet Cluster, is not adequately explained by baryonic matter alone, nor by modified gravity. The lensing mass is spatially distinct from the hot gas, requiring a collisionless component, something naturally accounted for by dark matter but problematic for MOND. Furthermore, the cosmic microwave background anisotropies present a serious challenge for modified gravity. The Lambda CDM model, with cold dark matter and dark energy, fits the full angular power spectrum of the CMB, including the ratio of peak heights and positions, with remarkable precision. MOND-inspired relativistic theories must introduce additional dark components, ironically resembling dark matter, to reproduce these features, undermining their appeal. Simulations of large-scale structure formation further bolster the Lambda CDM model. It reproduces the observed galaxy clustering, filamentary cosmic web, and void distributions, phenomena which MOND and its extensions have yet to model successfully, particularly in non-linear regimes. Predictive flexibility also distinguishes the two paradigms. Dark matter offers a framework for a broad array of phenomena, from early universe physics to galaxy formation and lensing. Modified gravity, while elegant at galactic scales, tends to be less predictive without fine-tuning or empirical adjustments, especially in relativistic regimes. In sum, the dark matter hypothesis currently offers a more unified explanation across multiple domains, albeit with the unresolved problem of direct detection. Modified gravity, in contrast, excels in certain niches, particularly galactic dynamics, but lacks a fully coherent cosmological theory. 